this one is kind of straight in there like this. this right. thing here. I actually probably need to replace it. So, John, are you used to being in the right seat of a 701? You know, I don't think I've ever been in the right seat of a 701. <laughs> Mexico Memorial Airport. Automated weather observation, two, zero, zero, one, Zulu, weather, wind, three, five, zero, at six, visibility, one, zero. Mexico traffic, Spermal 6128, Quebec is going to be back taxi in three, six, Mexico. Man, I love the 701. Oh, it is, it's a great airplane. Hello everybody, I'm Roger and this is John here. I got John up in here and uh, going to show him what the Rotax will do in the 701. Uh, just, you know, he had been up in the 701 with the Rotax, been flying with the UL Power. Um, you know, and he'll probably see a little differences here and there. Uh, a lot of it is just noise and feel, but it feels different. The Rotax line is going to fly the same. Yeah, the Rotax is very quiet, too. It's, it's, it yeah, is. I'm, I'm curious to see how this high-performance 701 does. This will be fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, I think the empty weight on this is, you know, probably 640, 650, but it's probably gained a few pounds over the years, you know, just like the rest of us. So, That's right, right. <laughs> and mine, mine is heavier, you know, I built mine heavier, even, even though the engine's right. similar weight, mine's, mine's a little over 700 pounds empty. Yeah, the difference is there. I got the three blade ground adjustable cinch stick prop, and I believe I have it set up for more of a cruise than a, than a power, I mean, stole performance. I mean, it's a stall no matter how you look at it, but, uh, right, right. you know, most of my customers like to see the top end because it still takes off shorter than they've ever flown in here. Absolutely, right. So they don't want to see a demo flight, uh, you know, going 65 miles an hour but climbing at 1,500. They'd rather see 85 and climbing at 1,300 feet. Exactly, right. And, of course, when it's a little bit of cruise, you've got, you've, it helps the efficiency. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Then we'll run it up to, I'll run up is at 4,000 RP and we check each condition, where yours is 1,700. Right, right. And that's all numbers, as you know, it's nothing. That sound like 4,000 RPMs. Controls clear and free. And I'll put down about, uh, oh, about half flaps. Yeah, half. Let's do that one. And I mainly use the flaps for takeoff uh, more stability than it is the uh, increase on takeoff, of, you know, performance. That's exactly right. I think I when you're that. right there, just lift it off, it just gives you, it feels a little bit more stable. It's not going to do anything, but it makes you feel better. I feel the same way. I do. It, and that's the exact same reason in the slow flight and that kind of stuff. I like to give it just a little bit of flaps for that. And it's, right. you're in that slow flight right there in that first phase. Take right. off, so it's, yeah, same right. thing. I got two wing tanks, they just drain together. Got an on-off valve over there. It's yep, on. yep. That's about it. It's simple, very simple. Got the standard old steam gauges. Makes it nice. As simple as it gets. Now yep. I try to tell people, keep it simple, because these... You need to build these yep. planes to fly, not to sit here and concentrate on what's inside. It's right. outside that matters. Yep, exactly. And the main thing is the road tax. You really like the water to at least get up to 180. Oil would be nice if you had it registered, but you'd be sitting here all day. Sometimes it's not. So it's like I've right. got the water at 180, plus we came out of a 70 degree hangar. I know it's not just, you know, right. it's not cold. It's freezing cold. Yeah, okay. I'm the same way at home, so we're similar on that too. I'm yep. already kind of somewhat conditioned, so quick, quick warm up and we're, we're both ready yep. to go. You know, I'll just uh, we'll go up do a couple takeoff and land and just show you how it flies with the seven or the Rotax engine and and maybe we'll let you try to see how you think. Mexico traffic, Paramount Six One Eight, Quebec is going to be departing runway three six and it will be just a local flight from Mexico. All right, so what I like to do is have the stick. Uh, you need to at least over halfway, otherwise you're going to be down to runway 70, 80 miles an hour and then you're barely it's pull a good back. day to fly right. seven zero one. Yeah, hey Dennis. That's one of our local guys there flying a 701. Okay. Flying the stick uh, back a little ways, release, sticks all the way back. I can't do anything until it's ready. I'm just waiting. Yep. Now I got heavy John here, so that's why I said, oh, right, it's ready quickly. But I couldn't do any more. I mean, I had to stick all the way back. You have to wait. It'll fly when it's ready. Yep. Now, I don't get extreme pitch like John does, 
I like to see over my nose a little bit. And I'm still <laughs> climbing eight, nine hundred feet a minute. Yeah, that's impressive. Two go up, yep, yep. My rudders are a little stiffer than probably most, so I'm just used to it. But it's definitely, you know, you can tell the difference between flying by yourself and two people even on takeoff. We took off very short, but if I was by myself, it'd been, it would have been, nose uh, comes off instantly, boom, boom, yep, boom. Yep. You would, you would have easily knocked a third off that, I'm sure, probably yep. more. And we'll just go out here and do some turns and come back in. And, uh, this airplane's all built, all, all about pattern work and having fun. Got yeah, a low and slow, yep. Yep. So that's what it's all about with these. And Dennis, where are you located? Oh, I'm about, uh, let's see, uh, about 17 miles out, coming out of Moberly. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're just uh, about a mile, just uh, in your direction. Yeah, I'm looking at 12 minutes to get back. Starting to sound like a jet guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Matt Dennis there flying a 701. Uh, he's one of our local pilots. Get past these geese here and we'll... One of the most impressive things with this is the bubble doors. You can, I mean, you can look straight down without having to hit your head on anything. So exactly. It's incredible. Yeah. Visibility is just really second to none that I've seen. Just like yours, I mean, you can bring it over on the wing tip. Yeah, and that gets me where I can, I, I actually use the top window a fair amount to look over yeah. and check stuff, so that's... Love it. I love it. Yeah. Makes me jealous. I'm gonna have to go home and fly. <laughs> Yeah, the 701's fun. And the nice thing I like about it is you can roll out right on the heading. Yeah, yeah. You know, remember the certified airplanes, you got to roll out early. <laughs> and then tweak them into yeah. that slowly. Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, you really can. These are so light and nimble. You can make them do a lot of things you can't make certified right. do. And do you got the VGs on your elevator? I do. Okay, yep. I thought you did, yeah. Now, the VGs really help on slow flight. And, uh, you know, my customers really like seeing a slow flight, even though it's more than 30, it's very stable. Full control and yep, everything. full control. Yep. yep. And it doesn't stall at all, as you know. No, it, not at all. It, it'll get a little bit mushy on it'll, control. It'll float like a leaf. Right. And that's about it. And that's a really, I've heard you say that in videos before, that's a really handy feature. If you get a high wind gust or something like that, you pull back the throttle a little bit and get it to where it's not, it's a slower speed, and it really does. It floats around like yeah. a leaf. It's not one of those hard hammering like you do in some of the faster aircraft that aren't stole. Right. We'll go back and do a couple landings. Do you want to feel it? See how it feels compared to yours? Yeah. I'm thrown in, but absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's quick. It's, it, I mean, same plane, essentially, you can, you can tell just in the feel. Yeah. Hey, in Mexico, traffic from 701, it's an air left down for runway 36, Mexico. And then what I like to do is beam the number to bring back power, pitch the nose up, lead off the airspeed, put a little flaps down, and then start my descent. And I do my technique a little different than you. I, I maintain a little higher approach, or at least from what I've seen of your competition. Yeah, I yeah. maintain a little higher approach and control that uh, sink rate with just power. I like your approach. That, that, that's really, yours is more by the book and probably a lot safer than mine too, yeah. Now you do fine with yours, or is that it's your technique? My little, my little 300 foot runway really just kind of, the way you come around the corner and you right. need to drag it in, it just re it really kind of leads you to want to do that. But sure. I, yeah, I need to, I definitely need to incorporate that. Of course, mine, mine comes into a little bit of an inclined runway too. So oh. if, you, if you already have some power, it's easy. Right. I just touch more to do that incline. Right.
could be the difference between uh, using like a Rotex and a gearbox, how you how you want to set up your landing, you know. I had a little touch of power and I got a lot of power because of the gearbox too. Right, right. Yeah, Mexico traffic, Spermal is turning uh, base to final, 3-6 Mexico. Well, this is a lot higher than my normal uh, approach. Mexico traffic Commission 51 Pop is uh, eight miles uh, northeast. We'll be doing the practice approach to runway 24 Mexico. This this is one of the yep. benefits of the Zenith stole. It, it, if if you are high, it's easy to yep, pull, that pull back. Really, bring just it let in. it settle. Be patient. It caught me there, didn't it? A little it? gust, <laughs> yep, yep. But look how I got it controlled back, I had a little power. Again, guys, I've said it in the video before, <laughs> but you're looking at the master right here. That was a pretty good, pretty significant little gust right there. At the time. I wasn't you know. expecting that either. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mexico traffic, Spare Ball, uh, 618 Quebec is going to be turning left downwind for 36 Mexico. That was the perfect catch. Just a little burst of yep. power and you're, you're right back on top of it. It's, it's amazing how, how these things are forgiving and able to do that. And Mark, how far out are you? Uh, say again? Yeah, what's your location now, Mark? Okay, we're just a little bit northeast of uh, runway 24 Center Okay, I'm on left down with 36 Mexico. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to go to Mr. Approach. I'll keep my eyes out. Roger that. And we got to keep an eye out for him because he's uh, Comanche a little faster and he's just doing a half hour approach. Oh, right. Hey, Mexico, traffic sprint is based to final four, three, six, Mexico. I said it a minute ago, but I'll reiterate that the, the um, upgrade option for the flap control is uh -huh. it's an awesome upgrade for the 701. Yeah, because a lot of guys they don't they're not using the other flaps because it's too difficult to deploy. Right. And they just find out they don't use it. And they don't know how to fly the airplane because they're not using it. Mexico traffic, Skyhawk 3657 Lima, 10 miles to the south, inbound for landing, Mexico. Yeah, I found that just just the one notch gives you a, a quite a bit more stability there when you're uh -huh. in a lower flight. So. Mexico traffic, experimental nine or seven two Alpha Zulu's five miles northwest to land in three six Mexico. Ah, I missed it a little bit. How about it? I'm watching that windsock out there and it's still fluctuating some, so that's that's impressive anyway. Yeah, where's he at? Still want to take off as yeah, Mexico traffic experiment 701 is going to be departing runway 36 stay in the pair of Mexico. Yep, it's ready to fly quickly. Uh huh. I find about 55 is about my best. Not as impressive as you as you do, but uh, this is pretty impressive. Well, they, they, you know they both are. This one's a fair amount lighter than mine, and it like, take off to take off. There, if we, I'm sure if people watch us back to back, they wouldn't see a huge amount of difference. In Probably it, so. not. And then to me, that just says a lot for the design. It's it's really it impressive. Is. It is exactly. People ask me about, and you know, I get the messages all the time. People ask me about mods and what they should do different, and they want to do this and that and that, and I'm. I really try to sway most people from mods because of it. It's tried and true, yeah. and I mean, it works just so well in its stock form. Exactly, you're exactly right, exactly. And this is pretty much a stock form here. We haven't, really, the only thing we have that Chris did design was the BGs on the elevator, the flap handle, and the streamlined struts. Yep, yep. That's really about it. 
And I was, I was lucky enough to build mine, I guess as a later model, I was able to incorporate that into the initial build, so I haven't, now people ask me that too, what have you done to, to right. improve yours for stole competition, and I haven't done a no, single yeah. thing, it's just, no. it's the way I build it. Yeah, Mexico traffic, Spearball 701 is on a left downward for uh, 36, Mexico. Mexico traffic, Spearball 9 or 7, 2 off Zulu's uh, left downwind for 36, roger, I've got you in sight. Roger that. So a little bit of upset turbulence right in this area. Just to make it annoying. Get right. There's a bird. Yep, there's, there's another bird. That's why it's uh, turbulent right there. They're flying over. <laughs> exactly right. We feel that. We feel those from these little airplanes. Uh huh. That it doesn't bother. It's just annoying. That's all it is. Right. Yeah, Mexico traffic spread models turning final three six Mexico. Bunch of birds there. So what far, those are? So far, I've been really lucky with that. I haven't had, you know, I haven't had any really close calls with it. They, they usually see me, and of course, I'm normally flying slow enough, putting around the farm that they right. just we don't pay attention to one another. Right. Yeah, you just set it up, keep a little power in, that's about 50. Mexico traffic, Spearmill 2 Alpha Zulu, turning 536 in Mexico. Just let it settle itself. When it gets a little closer, I'll pull back power a little bit. Then I'll add a little bit when I start bringing the nose up. Yep, keep a little But as you air. know, it'll, it'll, it'll start dropping quick once you start bringing that nose up. Yes, yep, you bleed off a lot of, a lot of speed quick when you start bringing the nose and catching those slats. Beautiful. Yeah. There you go, on the center line, right, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm picking on Dave a little bit. He's a good guy. Now, no, no promises on the center line for me. I don't have the center line at home. I just hit my little strip. So You're always on the center line. I, I guess that's true, yeah. My center line's I, it's about 30 feet wide, and that's it. Yeah. It is impressive, though. And very quiet. I mean, a lot of these planes are kind of known for being being quiet, but yours and mine both, I think you could easily fly, you could fly Mexico comfortably without having to have the radios either. Oh, yeah. Mexico. And I've, you know, I've, I've, I've taken a few uh, demos with without headsets. I only had one yeah. with me at the time or whatever, and we just both leave them off and we go on a quick demo. Yeah. When I'm not in an airport or something, and it's we can have a conversation while we're flying without headsets. Yeah. So it's, it's Pretty neat. Mexico 